Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. I was so excited about this episode that I've been ready since quarter of because I'm super excited to show you the sleeve and then I'm also super excited to show you um, my pressing surface project and I'm really excited to tell you that I'm going to be getting a new cutting mat and I'm not going to divulge too many details about that today because I will be doing an unboxing video when it arrives but in preparation for this um, new cutting surface I want to make sure that my irons don't slide off my current pressing surfaces and melt my new cutting mat because I have killed my cutting mat partially due to my own um, I guess you could call it operator error by, you know, putting my hot irons on little pressing mats and then they slide off or I bump them off as I'm pushing stuff around to show you guys what I'm working on. So I've created a size that I think is really going to work well for me um, for that purpose. And then the other thing is, I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but if you do, you may notice every now and then I post a photo of me hiking in the woods and I I posted a picture of my um, my ice spikes I called them my snow tires and I lost my snow tires between the previous storms and the ones we've been having lately so I really needed a new pair and I'm really excited to show you those as well so I know that's not sewing related but I'm showing you my ice spikes let me just say hi. Hi, Diane. Hi, Janie. Welcome. Um, I, If you guys hike or do anything in the slippery, you know, trails, you might note that having either something like a yak track or um, a crampon or ice spikes make it much more enjoyable. And, oops, hold on one second. And so I had lost my ice spikes, and then I ordered a new pair. And in the meantime, I was using my yak tracks. And what happens with my yak tracks, because they're so old, is the rubber stretched out, and they actually flip over my sneaker. So I just want to show you, I was so excited. I, The first pair of ice spikes I ordered got lost from Amazon. Like, first they were coming, then they were delayed, delayed. Finally, Amazon contacted me and said that they were um, lost. So I ordered another pair, and I just want to show you here. I'm really excited that the first pair that I ordered actually got lost and didn't come, because look at this nice case. Now this uh, Miracle, that's the brand of the ice spikes I had um, originally that I can't find. So when this came yesterday, I was so excited, and I want you to know that the minute I'm done today, I am strapping these on and I'm going hiking with my dogs in the snow. It's actually snowing. We had we had about four inches overnight, so I'm super excited about this. Um, hi, Nilgun. Hi, Diane. Hi, Judy. Welcome, ladies. I'm getting onto sewing in one second. I just want to show you these. So I'm just going to zip these this case open and show you. Um, look at how nice these are. See those spikes? So you can picture me running around. I do like a four and a quarter mile loop um, up and down hills in the snow and ice. So I cannot wait to give these it, their first test trial or their first maiden voyage the minute I'm done um, with my FabFit Friday. So I just wanted to show you that and just show you what a nice case they came in. So if you need a pair of um, crampons or ice spikes, get these uh, Miracle ones because they're very nice and they come in a nice case. Hi PG. I'm guessing PG doesn't need these because she lives in Florida. Um, so for those of you warm weather girls, I'm sorry I took time to talk about this, but I'm very excited about them. All right, so I have two topics that I wanna talk about today. I am going to show you guys how to um, make room in your raglan sleeve top. and so where we're going to make room is here, okay? Um, <laughs> PG says, no, thank you. I know, PG. Um, 
Okay, so I got this is another um, subscriber Q and A. Someone had asked me to make room in a raglan sleeve for a bicep. So I actually played around with it to make sure I could do it nice and tidy for you guys. So I just want to show you the finished sleeve first, and then I'm going to show you how to do them. Um, oh, Janie says send a picture of them when you have them on. Oh, I will. Um, do you guys follow me on Instagram? Because that's where I'll put it, since I do not have my Facebook thing working out. Um, so I've been doing, I've been posting my little behind the scenes and my little extra fun photos in my on my Instagram. So I'm Jay Stern Designs on Instagram. All right, so let me um, let me just get my picture and picture back. Okay, so this is the first thing I'm going to show you guys today. You can see here, and I'll color it in so you can see. Basically, I split the sleeve apart, and I made this room right in here. Okay, so that's going to add room um, through the bicep area of your sleeve. And if I hold my arm up, you can see that um, at the base of the armhole here, okay, if you kind of go up, you know, across the pattern. So my base of my armhole is right here. That's approximately where your bicep is. So you can see that I've um, I've added it there, and then as it goes to the top towards the neckline, it peters out to nothing, and then it peters out to nothing down here as well. So let me show you how to do this. This is a really quick adjustment, so I thought I would just tack it on to showing you how to make your own custom pressing surface if that's something you'd be interested in doing. All right, so I am going to just draw a guideline across my arm like this. Whoa. <laughs> Anna tripped over some stuff coming out of her room, so <laughs> sorry about that. All right, um, and then I'm also going to draw a second guideline, maybe three inches down from that. Okay, It's easier if you separate the upper part of the sleeve from the bottom part of the sleeve and then add the bottom of the sleeve back after you adjust the pattern. So for now I'm just going to cut this off like this and I'm just going to put it aside for now. Alright, so then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw myself a um, a vertical guideline and I'm going to sort of be in the middle of the sleeve here like this okay so to create the room where we need it and where we need it is really right in here that's where your bicep is what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the sleeve apart again along this line and actually well I mean, I could, yeah, I'm just going to cut it apart. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along my verticals, and I'm going to make a hinge at the top here. Okay, I'm just going to grab some paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread the top part of the sleeve the amount I need to add. And if you guys watched Fit Tip Tuesday today, I showed you how much a 3 8 inch seam allow, I mean, a 3 8 inch adjustment added to a full bust. So when you're working with a knit pattern, less is more. So if your sleeve is tight, um, you know you can kind of try to figure it out, but you don't need to add as much to create more ease as you would if you're working on a woven pattern. So I'm going to spread this, let's say a half an inch, and I'm going to tape that down. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing to this bottom section here. I'm going to spread that also a half an inch. Oops, I probably don't need this extra paper here. Okay, so I'm just going to spread and spread. Okay, and then I'm just going to tape that down. Okay, and then when I put it back together, I'm going to lose a little bit of vertical length here, 
but I'll show you where we're going to put it back. So notice, to straighten this out, let me draw a pink guideline here. So if I straighten this out, I'm losing um, approximately an inch of length right here. Okay, because we want to be able to sort of stick this back on. And you can see that it's overlapping. Right, let me get rid of this. So when I put this back on and connect it to the original, um, you know, side or underarm seams here, I'm just going to tape it back and I'm using my pink guideline here. You can see that it overlapped and we lost that length. Well, where did that length go? It actually went to the bottom of the pattern. Look at this. See right here? There's the length, right? So when I attach the bottom part of the sleeve back, you can see that the original length of the pattern is put back. Does that make sense to everybody? So I'm just going to tape it on the sides here, and then I can put some paper in there to fill it in. So basically what we did was we spread just this part of the pattern where your bicep is, but not all the way down the sleeve, okay? And certainly, just to finish this up, I could, you know, stick some paper in here so it it's filled in and it's complete. Okay, so that's how you add ease to a raglan sleeve. And actually, you probably could do this for any sleeve. So. Um, please let me know if you guys have questions about this, but um, I do know that somebody wanted to know how to do this because it was a Q&A &A from one of my subscribers. So I hope you're watching, and I hope you understand. And, you know, if anybody else needs to add um, ease to their raglan sleeve, this is how you do it. And I'll just color in. This is all the ease that I added right here. Okay. And then remember, we lost, you know, the amount of um, length we lost is right here, but we added it back in down here. Okay, so that's how you add ease to a raglan sleeve top, a raglan sleeve pattern piece. And, um, you know, please let me know if you have questions about that and I'll help you. But now I want to move on to my... Um, oh, PG says, very helpful. I always need room in the bicep area. Oh, good. I'm glad, PG. You can really do this to any sleeve pattern, um, but just, you know, just make the same guidelines. All right, so let me get rid of all of my raglan sleeve stuff for now. And the next thing I'm going to show you is... Um, my, my most popular current pressing mat that I use right now is this one. Okay, you can see it's pretty small, and I know you've seen me using this, um, you know, during some of our FabFit Fridays. And what happens with this is this iron gets extremely warm. And what happens is if I'm showing you guys something, sometimes... I mean, it's not plugged in now, so it's not it's not hot now, but sometimes I'm showing you something, I push it away, and it does this, and then it creates um, print marks on my cutting board. And I think if I move me out of the way here, let me see, hold on. My mouse is sometimes not, okay, so see. Um, I just want to show you here, see, oh, right here. I think you can see right here there is a um, there is a print from the iron that fell on my board. You can also see on the other side of my board it's very dirty and it's rippled from me dropping my iron on my cutting mat. So I mean I'm having it fall off my cutting board onto I mean having it fall off my pressing mat onto my cutting board. So. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm getting a new cutting mat. I'm super excited about it. And like I said, I'm not gonna 
say anything else about that until it arrives, but I will be doing an unboxing video and showing you guys how to set that up when it comes. And I want to make sure that I do not melt or burn my new cutting mat. So this is the size I want to do for my cutting, my new cutting, I mean, my new pressing surface. I went to Home Depot and I bought a four foot, and I thought it was by one foot, but really it measured out to be 11 and a quarter inch. But basically the way this is going to fit when I'm working is like this. So if I'm showing you guys something, I can have it right here. And then if I need to move it out of the way, I can just prep, you know, push it away from me. And this will give me enough room to use it like an ironing board. Okay, so it's got, you know, it's four feet long and I'll be able to use it as, you know, more like an ironing board. I can iron here and then I'll have plenty of room to put my, you know, my Alisso iron over there on the other end like that. Okay. And I'm really excited about it. I'm going to try this bigger size and we'll see. Um, some of me wants to chop a, a little bit off, but I'm just going to try it and see because the other thing about this size and my work table is, my work table is four feet across that way. So I envision storing it just on my cutting, you know, on, I'll reorganize all the stuff I have at the end of my table over there and I'll just keep it over there on the end of my, you know, cutting mat so it's always available to pull in and use. So I'm going to try this big size and the way I'm going to do this is, I'm really excited, I got to find the hammer. Let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger here. All right, that's as big as we can get. All right, so I've already pre-cut all the pieces. So what I'm going to do is um, on the top, I cut out two pieces of um, batting. One piece is a warm and natural batting, and the other one is the Insulbrite batting. The Insulbrite batting reflects or radiates the heat back up towards the source. So my thought on this is, I'll put the warm and natural against the wood to absorb moisture, you know, to keep it nice. And then I'll have the Insulbrite on top underneath my fabric to reflect the heat back up. Okay, so that's kind of my thought on this. And I'm going to, I cut them so they were just a little bit bigger than the surface, so if you feel around the edges, it will wrap around the, you know, the corners or the top edges of the wood, but I'm not going to wrap the batting to the underside. So I've got that all lined up, um, and the insole bright is actually four inches um, sh less wide than my board, so I'm just going to have it, um, you know, sort of not quite make it that two inches on the ends. I'm centering it in the board. So I'm going to do that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I've got this. So actually what I think I'm going to do is, let me just move this board for a second. I just want to make it easy to work with here. Um, I'm going to put this face up like this on the table. Oh, no. I'm going to take my, I, got, I picked a, 100% cotton denim to be my cover and I wanted to pick something white so there's no dye or anything that will transfer from my cover to what I'm ironing so this is just plain white 100% cotton denim okay and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center this batting um, on top of that and I'm gonna make sure there's no threads or anything that's going to show through because that'll make me nuts. All right, so let me just clear all that off. I'm going to put this, oh yeah, right, 
I'm going to put the Insulbrite right against the denim. So I'm basically stacking it upside down. All right, so I've got that. And I'm centering the batting on this piece of fabric. Now, I made the fabric um, approximately five inches bigger on each end or all the way around so I could wrap it to the wrong side. Um, so I'm just going to lay this down like this. Then I'm going to get my board and I'm going to lay that on top of my batting like this. And I'm going to make sure that the little bits of batting hang off all the ed edges, that little quarter inch, just so the um, corners of the wood are covered from the top side like that. And I think what I'm going to do, I'll start on this end over here. I got some one inch, these are actually, I got these at Home Depot, they are roofing nails. Okay, and the reason why I picked the roofing nails is because they have these nice flat heads. Let me zero in on that so you can see. See how flat that is? That way they're not going to bump up, you know, on the wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these nails to secure my fabric. And push this like this so you can see. Let me back that up. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is, let me move, let me move me over, oops, not that, sorry, oops. All right, why am I, oh, I've, now I've screwed it up. Hold on one second. Sometimes I just need a paper to be my mouse. Hold on. Sorry. Okay, let me, I want to move, oops, no. I'm going to move me over here. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start by using my hammer. And I'm going to hammer you know, I folded up the end like this. I want it to be very firm. I'm going to hammer it here. Oops. You'll get to see all of my um, tool using skills here. So, hi Terry, welcome. So I'm gonna, oops, oh my goodness. Oh gosh, I hope I have the muscles to do this. I should have tested this before I came on. Hold on. All right, I got that in, and see it's nice and flat. Then I'm going to do the other side over here. I'm just pulling it really firmly. Oh, hold on. Oops. Okay, I hope that's not too loud. Everybody maybe lower your volume. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this, I'm going to put it this way so I can really show you here. Okay, I am going to secure the other end, and when I secure the other end, I'm going to make sure it's really stretched so I'm pulling the fabric so it's taut. Okay, and then I'm also making sure my um, batting is also nice and stretched taut, like that. And so then I'm going to fold up this end and do this. One last one. Oops. Okay, over here. Oops. Let me see. 
see if I can make it. Oh, there we go. There we go. I'm sorry. Um, oh, Terry's is telling me I could use a comb to hold it to start it. That's probably true. I just want to make sure I'm not too, okay, too bright. Um, all right, so now I'm going to do this one. All right, so now that I've got it on connected on both ends, I'm going to flip it around just to make sure everything is lining up nicely. And you can see this makes a really nice, um, a really nice surface. Okay, so I'm kind of excited about this. So now, what I have to do is firmly attach it along the side edges. And just to let you know. When my new mat comes, when my new mat comes, I'm going to use a piece of the gridded plastic underneath this cutting board to line the back. So I'm not going to disassemble it now because I don't have the new cutting mat yet, but I'm going to cut a piece of the plastic grid that's underneath here. It came in two pieces, see? And I'm going to actually put it on the back here and I'm going to um, nail that on too so it'll slide nicely on my um, on my new cutting mat. All right so then we want to get a nice crisp fold here so I'm gonna do like a like I'm wrapping a package I'm gonna fold it down like this okay and then I'm gonna after I fold it down like this I'm gonna fold it up like this and I want a nice firm wrap. So again, I'm gonna nail it. I think I was a little shy to use the <laughs> hammer before. Now, the more I'm hammering it, the easier it seems to be getting. All right, so I'm gonna just, again, pull it snugly. I have a whole pound of nails, so I can really go to town with my nailing here. All right, and then we'll just keep going down this side. So again, I'm really trying to wrap it tight. I bought enough of this denim so that if I needed to resurface it, I could, um, you know, add a fresh cover to it. All right, so I'm gonna come over here now before I get too far and I'm gonna fold this side down so, I, so it's nice. Okay, so it's nice and firm like that. And then maybe I'll put one more over here. All right. So now I'm just going to turn it around and do the other side. But this is the side now that um, I want to make sure I pull everything nice and tight across. So again, I'm going to just fold this nicely. Wrap it up like that. Get my nails. See, and the cool thing is you can really make this any size you want. You know, for me, I'm going to try this um, sort of oblong 
long skinny one like an ironing board and see if I like it but if I don't like it I can take it apart and make it a little bit shorter Let me do with my, uh, my hammer. all right and then I think before I do the middle section I'm gonna get this side so it's nice and firmly You know, and if you don't have, um, obviously I'm going to have the benefit of my old plastic to, to back the backing so it's a nice finished surface in the back. If you don't have that, you could buy a piece of um, felt and line the back with felt. That's another idea. All right. Excellent. All right, let's just check and see how it's going. Oh, see, that's nice. Yep, very nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna just put a few more um, nails in here. Wow, I did that one in two hits. And again, just firmly pushing it. Okay. All right. Oops. All right, I hope I'm going to like this size. Um, I will. All right, so I'm going to put one more right here. All right, so as you can see, we now have a nicely tight wrapped um, pressing surface. And, you know, I think this is going to be nice for, you know, what I think my configuration is going to be. Like I said, my dream, or not my dream, but once I clean the, the, that end of my table down there, I am going to store it sideways like this across my table because my table is four feet across. So that's my plan for this cutting mat. Um, I mean, I'm pressing mat. So I'm kind of excited. Um, when I get my, um, when I get my new, uh, let me just make myself Hold on. Boy, my my mouse is not does not love me today. There we go. Okay. All right. So, when I get my new cutting mat, I will show you how to finish the backing of this with um you know, with the piece, the piece of plastic I'm going to put back there. But again, if you don't have that, you could use felt or another piece of fabric that doesn't ravel to um, protect the back. But in any case, that's my quick little tutorial on how to make a custom-sized pressing surface. And I will keep you posted on how I'm loving this size. If, if it's too big, um, I can very easily just take it apart and cut it off and then make it a little bit shorter. I may do that, to be honest with you. I'm just, I'm not sure, but we'll see. But in any case, um, that's my tutorial for today. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything? I know it was too widely. Actually, we did three topics. We did ice spikes, we did a sleeve adjustment, and we did a cutting mat, I mean a pressing mat all in one episode. It was jam-packed with different things, so um, yay. Yay. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I don't want to say I'm in a hurry to be done today, but I kind of am because I really want to go hiking. So um, this is a little bit of a shorty today. It's only been a little more than a half an hour, but um, that's what I wanted to show you guys today, and I hope you enjoyed it. 
If you have any questions or comments about making a custom pressing surface for your workspace, please post them below and I will help you. Um, I'm guessing by next week, next Friday, I think I will have my new cutting mat because I, they sent it um, either Saturday or Monday. So um, hopefully it'll come to me in a timely fashion. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you guys are staying safe. Um, if you're in a snowy area like me, you know, stay warm. And if you are living, if you live in Texas, I, I feel for you. I'm sending my prayers and good wishes to everybody who lives in Texas. Oh, that's such a horrible thing. But anyway, I hope you, um, have a nice weekend and I will see you next week for Fit Tip Tuesday. Oh, and just as a little FYI, on Sunday, I am doing a my Bernina L460 Serger um, manual topic is the three thread super stretch stitch, which I'm super excited about. So if you're interested in that, I'll be launching that at noon Eastern Standard Time on Sunday. And in any case, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next week with more fun topics. All right, bye.